Hi folks, let's create some techno bass lines on the analog rhythm. Okay, so since OS version 1.7, we've now got access to three different synth engines. Dual VCO, Chip and Raw. These are only available on the first four tracks. Since I probably want to use a kick, a snare and a clap, I think I'll sacrifice the rim shot. But keep in mind that both the rim shot and the clap are linked. So I can't use both at the same time. So for now, I'm just gonna turn off the clap. So we can use all 16 steps. And then if you double tap the synth button, you can change the machine. And yeah, let's start with the dual VCO mode. And the first bass line I usually start with is a rolling bass line. A rolling bass uses notes everywhere except on the kick. But as you can hear, the sound keeps on playing for a long time. So I need to go to the amplifier page, turn up the hold to one, and then turn down the decay. If you go to the trick page, I'm currently on C3. Let's lower this a bit. Maybe to an A. Okay, so we've got a couple of options. On the first encoder, we've got the tuning. semitones and since we've got two oscillators you can detune the second one and we can mix between them with the balance control you can also change the oscillator configuration right here If you want to reset the tuning, just hold down function and it will reset in octave uh, steps. Alright, we've also got two decay controls for both oscillators. Uh, but of course, this also depends on the uh, amplifier decay. If I lengthen this. You've got a band control. So this adds a pitch envelope, so that probably makes more sense for percussion sounds. So I'm not going to use that. Okay, let me reset the oscillators to the same pitch. And now, of course, I can also filter the sound. until you just start to hear the note and then turn up the envelope amount or the depth. Right, uh, let me lower the decay a bit. Uh, let's solo the sound. Okay, then you can just go to the amplifier and add some uh, overdrive. That's always a good thing. Okay, let's also add some delay. Boom. And I think I've already opened up uh, the spread. Yeah, it sounds pretty white already. Maybe remove some low end. Yeah, 
maybe a bit less. Lower the volume. Okay, cool. That's a rolling bass line. Now let's uh, turn this into an asset bass line. But before I do, let me first save the kit. So hold function and press kit. Save kit. I've already made one, so let me make a new one. Kit 2. Okay, now I'm gonna duplicate the pattern. So exit record mode, hold function, press copy, go to uh, a second pattern, hold function and press paste. Right, and as you can see we're on kit 2 right now, but I'm immediately gonna create a new kit. Save kit, kit 3. So now I can uh, make changes on this kit. So for example, if I change the note, and I go back to the previous pattern, but this one is still on kit 2, so the sound doesn't change. Right, but let's put it back to A1. Okay. Okay, now Asset uses a lot of octaves and accents. So let me add some octaves by holding a note in record mode and turning up the note. If you accidentally move another encoder, just click the encoder and it will clear the parameter lock. Maybe a bit lower actually. And maybe this note, I don't know. Asset also uses a lot of chromatic notes. So notes that are not in a scale. Okay, now let's add some accents. If you hold function and press accent, so bank F, you can just enter some notes. Probably I want to have the higher notes a little louder. You can also hold a note to see which note is accented. And you can turn it off right here. But I'm not really hearing anything. So I think I need to go to the trigger page and turn down the velocity. Then maybe turn up the volume then. The original 303 uses only one oscillator, so I'll switch to the raw engine and I'll turn off one oscillator. There's a balance control here, turn it all the way to the left. And yeah, a 303 uses either a saw tooth or a pulse. So in this case, all we've got is a saw. But we can add some noise if you want. Okay, let's shorten the decay a bit on the amp. And of 
course, it isn't asset without resonance. So let's go to the filter and turn up the resonance. Not all the way, halfway is enough. And then just play around with the depth and the filter cutoff. Another cool trick we can use is, if we go to the amp page, I'll turn down the delay, and then only on the higher notes, I'll hold down the trigger and turn up the delay. So we only get a delay on those accented notes. So that adds some cool dynamics without making everything muddy. Uh, and you can do the same thing with reverb, for example. Maybe if I change the reverb, make it a bit longer and with more low end. Yeah, if you want, you can of course add the second oscillator. And it's also good to detune it to a weird value, like 3 or 4. If you don't want to keep turning the filter cutoff knob all the time, you can just add an LFO and send it to the filter cutoff frequency. Let's turn the speed to 32 and the multiplier to 4. Maybe slower. Oh, uh, let me turn off LFO on the trigger page and I'm gonna add a silent trigger. If you hold function and uh, activate that trigger. Now it's dimly lit, so that means there's no notes, but we can add parameter logs. So if I hold this one and now turn up the LFO, that means the LFO will restart on the first trigger, even though it's set to free running. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> Maybe you want to trigger it only every two cycles. So go to the trigger page, hold the trigger, and change the trigger mode to uh, one over two. So every two bars it triggers this note. <laughs> Okay, let's uh, save this kit. Function kit, save. And yeah, let me also save the project, just to be sure. Uh, save project. All right, copy this pattern. Create a new pattern. Paste. And let's store the kit to kit number four. I could also just store the sound instead of storing a complete kit, but kits are linked to patterns. And I want to create a new pattern, so that's two steps for the price of one. 
Oké, okay, nou let's go to the synth track. Press record mode, hold function, clear. So we can start from scratch. Oké, okay, nou let me go to chromatic mode. So we can play uh, the synth like a keyboard. And let's activate scale mode by holding function and pressing chromatic. So these are the track settings. And here we can add a pad scale. Okay, let's change it to a minor Aeolian. No, not C, but A minor. Okay, you can lower the octaves with the arrow buttons. Okay, let me turn off the LFO. Okay, let's change the sound to chip. I've never used this one for techno, but uh, we've got some more oscillator options here. But the main benefit of this machine is that you can create chords by rapidly playing successive notes. So you can find this in old 8-bit uh, video games, for example. These were typically monophonic sound generators. Uh, and this was a little hack they used to get around that limitation. So you can adjust the speed. And yeah, adjust the offset. So we've got four steps, the original note, then an offset for the second interval, the third and the fourth. You can adjust the decay. But yeah, in this case, I'm not going to use those chords. So let's reset it to zero. Uh, let's lower the tuning. And yeah, here we've got a sine wave. Oh, let me uh, turn down the resonance. And open the filter. Triangle. S sol. And a square wave. Uh, noise. And some other weird waveforms. Pulse width modulation. Okay, yeah. Plenty of options. Let's take a square wave, for example. Okay, now I want to hold record and press play to enter live recording mode. But if I hold the record button down and press play again, it switches to quantized mode. So every note I play lands exactly on the 16th note grid, which is useful. I'm also going to lengthen the pattern by holding function, pressing page, and then pressing page three more times. So now we've got a four bar pattern. Okay, now let's record some notes. If you don't like a pattern, hold no and press the track. Hold it down until the entire pattern is erased. And then try again. I think I want to disable velocity. If you hold function and press uh, the filter, there's a velocity to volume option. You can disable that. Now all notes are equally loud. Let's play around with the decay. Okay, 
Okay, now it's also good to add some slides. And slides allow you to smoothly glide between parameter locks. So for example, if I hold this node, well, actually go to the synth page, hold this node, and change the oscillator. Now if I hold this trigger again, I can activate the slide. But of course we won't hear anything because the note is really short, so let's increase the decay. Oh, and let me open the filter again. And there's also a decay on the synth of course. It's really long. <laughs> okay, now let's randomly add some uh, different waveforms. Oh, wrong button. And add some uh, slides again. You can see which triggers you parameter locked by looking at the flashing uh, LED. Weird. You can also create portamento effects this way, but only if you parameter lock uh, the pitch on the actual machine. So the tuning basically, and not the note itself. So for example, on this note, if I change the tuning one octave up and add a slide. And maybe this one as well. Tuning. Already had a slide. Mm, yeah, maybe a bit less weird. <laughs> okay, maybe this one as well. Okay, maybe not as uh, techno as I wanted, but it sounds cool. Right, cool. Remember to save the kit. But those are three different techno bass lines on the rhythm. It's amazing to get such a diverse sound palette out of a drum machine. Pretty Wild Electron released this update years after the original launch. But I'm glad they did. Let me know if you have any questions and if you want to learn more about hardware music production. I'm teaching one-on-one -on -one lessons online or in my studio in Amsterdam. So check out optoproductions.com for more info. Alright, I'll see you all next week with another tutorial.